Balls of Borka, Session 28, The Air Ivan's funeral is in seven days, and the party has business to attend to before then. Reth is not convinced that Ivan is truly dead and gone, but Lord Light is fearfully insistent that he must be dead. Lord Light calls upon his old servant, now under Ivan's employ, the headless Sir Dulahan. Dulahan says he has one task to complete before he can return to Light's household. Zatan takes some time to discuss matters with the half illithid Jelaine of Liskova. He wants to protect her from the butler's council, who are tracking down all illithids in Borka, and encourages her to continue her work on her mistraversing stagecoach. When Zatan speaks with Elaine of Liskova, he lets slip a rumor that it was Ingvild Akratir who truly killed Ivan. The party reconvenes to slay Riku for the butler's council. If they slay Zatan's illithid informant and the last true mind flayer in Borka, the butlers have promised to reveal a secret child of Klaus Beritzi, a contender against Ivana Beritzi for the throne of Borka. Riku, who knows spells from feasting on the brains of wizards and has somehow become an undead Alhun, puts up a fight but is eventually slain by the party. The party returns to the Evliskova estate, where the Herringun butler, Miss Cattingdale, escorts them into the old family crypts. There are three other butlers gathered there, the gnome Dubray from House Deliznia, the salty human Boatswain from the House Ocretir, and the satyr Sunbeam from House Praetorius. They reveal the child of Klaus and Elaine to be none other than Zatan. Raised as an orphan in the Scholomance, Zatan never knew his heritage. While the small shock wears off, Lord Light and Lord Reth begin to wonder how they can use this to the group's advantage. The butlers, however, have other plans. Miss Cattingdale converses with Zatan telepathically about the threat that the powerful Light and Wrath pose to Borka should the group stay together. It seems that the party's penchant for slaying mighty monsters has taken a turn against them. Zatan tries to plead on his compatriots' behalf, saying that they can find a way to share power with Ivana Baritzi. This answer is not to Cattingdale's liking, and she declares that Light and Wrath must be slain before they can become more powerful. The boatswain and Cattingdale draw swords and rush down Reth. Zatan apologizes to his once friends and attempts to flee from the horrid scene. Light too tries to run, but is careful with his dimension door and doesn't get too far away. Dubray transforms into a golden dragon and tracks down Light. Reth fights back. Sarin is confused but comes to Light and Reth's defense with her maul. Zatan takes a more active role, turning his staff of charming on Siren and forcing her to grovel while the execution of Wrath and Light plays out. Light is brought down by the boatswain and left to bleed out. Wrath uses every trick and incantation to fight and stay alive, but it is not enough. The dragon Dubre brings him down, and Cattingdale delivers the coup de grace. Siren finally gains control of her own mind from Zatan's charms, and runs to heal Lord Light before he too is put to death. As soon as Lord Light is awakened, he glimpses dead wrath and dimension doors above ground. The butlers attempt a search to no avail, but seem satisfied with their endeavors. Wrath is done for, the party is broken, and they will back Zaytan as a suitable ruler for Borka. In the days to come, Lord Light will attempt to spread the tale of the secret butler's council that is not to be trusted. Sarin will remain by his side to see the truth revealed and righteous revenge won. The Nobriskov house will be unsettled by the premature death of one of the nine, their archfey patron sent wild and their house in distress. Ivana Baridzi will remain a threat as she seeks the empty throne against a new and conflicted contender, Zatan Graves. End of Book One